All right, so if it's okay with Thomas and Zephols, we're going to start now. Uh, this is the 76th episode of this podcast. So as mentioned before, this is Zephols from the community, who some of you may know from making terrible creations and then <laughs> posting about them on the forums, and uh, Spark Thomas, who many of you may know as the troll. Yes. <laughs> That's, That's it. <laughs> and I, of course, have your benevolent host, Moose. So... Something happened uh, the other day, and uh, it all relates to the game jam having ended this morning. So, Zephyrus, do you want to go ahead and fill us in on this little story of yours? Uh, yeah. Uh, so Defco and I, I, I had Monday off. I have all Mondays off, and I was like, dude, I got all Monday. Like, my wife's cool with it. Like, I'm just gonna game. She's got, she's got things she can do. I'm just gonna. Like work on Project Spark from like 7 a.m. till I crash. So I'm like live streaming all day. People are like, "Hey, you know it's dude like the 23rd at 9 a.m. right?" I'm like, "Yeah, totally, dude. We're gonna get this done by 9 a.m." So we work. People keep telling me that. I'm like, "No, I know." Thinking Monday was the 22nd and Tuesday was the 23rd. Wrong. So we pulled an all-nighter the night of the 21st, thinking it was due the next day at 9 a.m. Get done at like 6 o'clock in the morning. We're like, "Bro." Oh, that was crazy. I'm so tired. Going to chat and everybody's like, dude, it's not due for like another 24 hours. <laughs> so we, we stay up all night for absolutely nothing. Dumbest thing ever. See, the, I think numbers. that's strategic though because – so that was the whole thing, right? We kept saying 22nd, 22nd, 22nd. But the whole yeah, thing yeah. was like the official – there was some wiggle room there. So people yeah, would feel yeah. really stressed to get it in pretty much the day before it was actually due. There was, we were kind of uh, – sneaky about that because we wanted to not have anybody get disqualified for missing the deadline and so far it looks like that hasn't been the case like last yeah, time we yeah. had like three or four entries that came in like two or three hours too late which was it's kind of upsetting right when people work that hard and then they miss the deadline yeah, yeah. so and i like i feel like a bad guy right when we're like we gotta enforce it i mean we can't let anybody have like an unfair advantage there is time limits and but it just you know you don't want to see that happen to any good creations yeah of course or to really bad creations, such as one that Zevil's made. <laughs> just absolutely terrible. I'm I'm really excited to like start actually being able to play these. I haven't yet. I'm just been doing like all the inventorying and making sure uh, all entries are in in like catalog cataloging them and etc. So that's like what I've been doing like all day long, which is cool, right? That's a good thing when I've been spending all day long. It it didn't take me like 20 minutes. It's been uh, <laughs> there's a lot of entries, which is cool. I'm really looking forward to playing them all. We did find uh, last night that there was another like cause for a bit of panic amongst several of the creators that were getting uh, their entries into the arcade category, especially those that had used level linking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. There was some panic from people whose leaderboards were not appearing. <laughs> this, wait, this guy, I think, is the angle <laughs> I need to It wasn't it was just me. Maybe. I don't think, I don't so. think so. No, <laughs> there was uh, pretty much any, any arcade uh, creations that were level linking that I think had that same issue. Yeah. 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 I and, ran into uh, Ragnarok, and I was just like, whatever. It doesn't really matter. People like the game or they won't. But now for Game Jam, I'm like, dude, this better work. If I'm doing something wrong, I need to know. <laughs> I just checked, and uh, to date, there are three people on the leaderboard for uh, one Tim Hero, and <laughs> that they are Z Fools, uh, Defco, and also uh, Rust Plague. The other people. <laughs> I'm not sure what it takes to actually get on the leaderboard because when it's I only post when you finish. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, I think somebody else is on the leaderboard, so I'm pretty sure they have a negative score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That po is that post? If it's yeah. Negative, oh yeah. Awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> we, what we didn't want to we wanted to create a system where if it's done in a certain amount of time, you get a bonus based on how fast you beat it. Okay. But we didn't want people to just go and co collect point coins. So, like, the longer you stay in the game, the better score you get because you keep collecting point coins. Mm -hmm. So we're punishing people for staying in the game too long. So there's, like, this perfect window of, like, when to leave the map and when not to. And we know what that is, but you don't. <laughs> so that's part of the fun, I think. I hope so, anyway. So if people were, co so if people were collecting the uh, points, tr just trying to maximize their score, or killing the same enemies over and over again, they're actually getting negative score? Uh, over time, yes, you have a multiplier, and however much time has gone by, there's an invisible score that built uh, that goes down from like fifty thousand, and then it multiplies how much score is left in that bucket by your multiplier. So if you have like negative fifty multiplier, and your time bonus is like 
2,000, you're going to get like negative 100,000 points. <laughs> so you just don't sit, don't try and like, you can find exploits on our level. I think that's half the fun. But one of the exploits is most definitely not staying in the map for a long time to collect points. So I think the first thing we have to actually talk about with your level is just how bad it looks. Um, <laughs> it appears as if this is like almost Project Spark default and no effort was put into it whatsoever. Yeah. So about how much time would you say you put into it? Like five to ten minutes? Or... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know, dude. I mean, I think the best part is the sky. Like, I think I think the best part of it is the sky. You know, that was, that was pretty hard. Oh, Necromancer Sky? Yeah. I think um, Andy, switching that toggle is pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy Zibitz would probably appreciate you hearing that you like that, that, that sky. You know, <laughs> it's beautiful. And you guys use the castle brick, I think, for the uh, for the for the bricks on the houses in the in the modern uh-huh. setting. Of course, of course, yeah. So yeah. I was expecting the, you to see a little bit more plaster in there. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> Obviously. Obviously, uh, it was very, very, very time-consuming to make it look that pretty. And Defco, all credit to Defco for that. I mean, I mean, the guy just makes sure every single corner of every single building of every single city it just looks perfect. So it's it's pretty sweet. He's he's good at what he does. As much as you tease him. <laughs> and there was actually a nice mix of oh good. There's a nice mix of primitives in there, which usually clash horribly with uh, the yeah. textured. Material in Project Spark. Uh, you're talking about the the custom, like the, the actual characters, right? I was talking about like the pipes and stuff as well. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, some of the, I think some of the piping is actually terrain too, right? Yeah, some of the it pit, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's like I think, like he was saying something like almost all of the map is all of the 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 map, not the obviously not things like barrels and stuff, but all the buildings are like all terrain. He found a way to actually paint terrain that's like basically like using um it, it's weird he was talking about it like using like like bit graphics like almost like every single pixel he found a way to do that but it runs into like a some terrain voxel limit or some mumbo jumbo but he made some things look really cool that are techniques that probably nobody's ever used and he's like i'm going to use these in this game and it's i, I mean i i'm not tuning my horn because i have nothing to do with the visual like but it's one of the best looking games i've seen on project spark Oh, that's because you haven't looked at my levels. Because <laughs> I haven't looked at your levels? I thought you were going to say because I had nothing to do with it. And I was like, that's right. You played Ragnarok on Spark. You're like, dude, this guy just like threw a bunch of crap in his yard. Like, this doesn't look good at all. But <laughs> it's, it's the the game does not look good, Ragnarok on Spark. But it's so different. And, and this this just looks amazing. I, I could never – I could have 10 years and I could never do what he did. It was good. Well, you could t- have 10 years and you you never uh, look as good as this. <sighs> that is true. This I could is... have 10 years and I couldn't grow that beard, dude. I got these bald spots right here. Yeah. <laughs> that is a pretty beefy beard moose yeah, going on. I like it. <laughs> this is my uh, No Shave November beard going into Why Bother no December. <laughs> why Bother oh, December. I'm super lazy. <laughs> I, find, I clean up a little bit. Like, I let it go, but I clean, I'm cleaning up for the holidays. <laughs> yeah, you do have, like, the whole uh, Punky Brewster younger brother type look go to i mean your wife must be like well this is my um this is my son (laughs) Uh. all right so word andrew is also joining us in chat and i guess we'd be remiss not to talk about how horrible his level is and um what a pain it's what a chore it's going to be for the judges to go through yeah it's actually funny because I think out of all like the big collaboration levels, I think I actually know the least amount about where Andrews because I've seen like nothing about it and they like have been very, very quiet, I think. <laughs> I'm, I'm really curious to play because I don't even know what to expect. All I saw was one little gameplay trailer that was on uh, Xbox. That was it. Yeah. Well, I guess they were just ashamed of how low quality it was. Because so they've been just not talking, yeah, not talking it up or anything. <laughs> I mean, I played it for a few minutes today, and I'm like, "There's walls that keep disappearing. This makes no sense whatsoever." And I'm watching somebody play it right now, and straight up, it looks amazing. <laughs> so amazing. Shut up. Well, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Zephyrs has a speech impediment where he forgets to put syllables and then the uh, second word on some phrases, so it was amazingly bad. 
amazingly <laughs> bad. No. And oh, now Chad is inundated with trying to figure out who Punky Brewster is. Salim Moon Fry. She's <laughs> cute. Um, the scat is like totally correct. <laughs> I have I have no idea who Punky Brewster is. <laughs> I didn't either. I was hoping you did. I was like, I don't know if he's talking to me, but must be a handsome dude if he is. Well, I'm only like three years older than Zephyls, and Thomas he's like twelve. So of course we don't we don't expect him to know what's happening from the 1980s, 1990s. But three years older than me. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 31. Okay, I'm 27. I'm pretty old. Yeah. I'm not that much. Yo- I'm like that much younger. I'm 23. You're so I'm, I'm 24 or 23, so four years younger. This is actually uh, a lie. Thomas is. Uh, this is his first job. He <laughs> is on a work permit. From his parents were very <laughs> <My> happy. <work. laughs> you made this joke like. I think eight times now. <laughs> it never stops it's community being funny. service for a senior project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, well, the um, legis- legislature was just glad to get me rid of them because they were like, "Man, we've had this intern for twelve years." <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> anyway, so anyway. the the uh, game jam. I'm surprised with uh, a lot of the major publicized entries had switched over to arcade like at the last moment i was expecting yeah, a, i think uh well i think people realize that our like just from me going through and cataloging what we've got so far um definitely i would say it's like almost three to one right now from what i'm looking at for how many are in epic first arcade so i think people saw a lot of opportunity in arcade because there was less entries um so and I think some of the other some people were kind of gearing toward they could pick either one what they wanted to go if they wanted to go epic or arcade. So, yeah, yeah. so Zephyl, is that what happened with you guys? You guys were uh, feeling really bad about your chances, so you switched to what you thought was going to be less competition, just so that yeah. you could possibly get in the fourth place ish. Definitely. We're like, you know what? Oh man, we had this. <laughs> no, actually, the truth though, uh, taking I'm assuming the one serious question that was asked so far in this stream, which was Thomas's, is definitely not Moose's. Um, what? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, dude, we we were in, we were like battling between arcade and uh, uh, arcade and Epic. I mean, and it was it's, honestly, it was it was a game that Defco was designing, and I was just kind of a cheerleader on the side for most of it. But as we got toward the end, it's like, what are we gonna do? And I'm like, well, I mean, I can help put a whole bunch of stuff on the screen for dialogue and stories or we can just create a score system and uh go with arcade so we chewed on it for a while and i think we just landed on hey let's just do arcade and cut some cut scenes and stuff and i think that was pretty common with this but it's not like a it's not like a, oh we're gonna do this because it's we're being lazy it's like we're doing this because we thought it was the best thing we could do to make this game what we wanted it to be so is the uh cheerleader outfit that you have in your closet behind you or no, I just take off my shirt. I got a big old D on my chest for Devco, and I. And I <laughs> yeah! Give me a D. This yeah. sounds awful. <laughs> don't do me. Don't do that. <laughs> I don't plan on it. <laughs> yeah, can you? I want you to talk a little to um, the fact about. Uh, I saw on like your post talking about your game jam entry about how it's kind of a callback to old school difficulty, and yeah, you know yeah. it's very doesn't hold your hand. It's kind of more Dark Souls than Mario or however. <laughs> yeah, what was yeah. the quote? The quote and was, you're just like, less I'm Mario, tired, more Dark Skulls. Yeah. Dark Skulls? Yeah. Souls. Thank you, Dark, Souls. I Dark have that schools. syllable problem. Remember, Dark no. Souls. <laughs> anyway, Dark Skulls is also a good stuff. series. Yeah. 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 Okay, so can, Thomas. Yeah, what's the thought about that? Uh, so when you when you play this game, like there's no there's no doubt. You get into this, you're like, wow, this, this is hard. Um, I'm going to actually kind of be a little comedic for a second. Um, and maybe this is a little insert, but I do my own personal streaming. And when I stream, I play games like I go in blind. I went into Legend of Zelda and I was like, dude, this game is like pretty hard. I don't know anything about it. Well, these guys that have played it for years are just watching me like Moose. And he's like, what are you doing? You suck at this game. Like, It's hard. Like you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. But it's like, well, every time you go into that map, the monsters are in the same place. You walk down to the corner, you shoot this way, you shoot that way, you walk out the door. Well, okay, I've never done that before, so I don't know that's how you're supposed to beat that level. People that have played Zelda can walk into Zelda, get through a dungeon in less than five minutes. People that have never played Zelda have to go into the same room 20 times and keep dying. Like, it's part of how you figure out how to play the game. This game, when you figure it out, you're like, oh, okay, I can beat this. Like, 
me and Devco are already competing. Like, how fast can we beat it? How well can we do? But people that have never seen it before, of course, they're going to have a hard time. Uh, and I, I think the biggest thing was this: we didn't want to do something where you just walk into the game and the game holds your hand and takes you on like a little cinematic adventure. This is not a cinematic adventure. Like, you're not going to just walk in a room, shoot things, and leave. You're gonna you're gonna go to the next area of the level. You're gonna have to figure out how to beat it. And once you figure it out, you're gonna feel much better about it. It's not just like you just punched your way through it. No, I spent time figuring out the strategy for this, and now I've accomplished it. And as far as it being difficult, this is my last little thing. As far as it being actually difficult, you got people that can, you know, no scope, 360, no scope, crap, Call of Duty, jump around, throw an eight across the map, know exactly where to throw it, and go 30 and 0 on Call of Duty. But they're gonna complain about the difficulty of a side scroller. It's 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 fun for us to see that because if we've made a game that is difficult but possible, that's awesome. If you make a game that's difficult and not possible, that's just bad game design. Anyway, that's my feel. Nice. Oh. So I wanted to okay, had what does Thomas have to say? Not Moose. <laughs> I just I was gonna say I had the offer I, I talked can't with hear you anymore, a Jeff, little no, bit no. yesterday. And he just he had a he think you know, he said something and kinda of stuck with me and he was like, you know, movies are meant to be watched, but games are meant to be conquered, is what he that's said. That's right. This yeah. guy. He knows what's up. <laughs> and I was like, that's pretty accurate and I like that. Because you're supposed yeah, to get yeah. this sense of accomplishment and like that's yeah, the whole point, yeah. right? It's and it's an interactive medium where movies and shows and all that. It's just you sit and watch it and you don't do anything. But games are all about being interactive and you accomplishing something. So I'm gonna do a, a video, a let's play. So if people really want to figure out the good strategies, I'll, I'll show them and it'll be on YouTube. But um, I think it's more fun to figure out on your own. It's just nice. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing: it's not so much about like a game being hard. It's so much about the game designers having to have the uh, imbue the skill set, imbue the skill set, imbue the skill set. Oh, there we go. Is this the I part where it makes fun of you? <laughs> no, this is the part where you get hung up on. Now, so imbue the skill set into the the players so they can uh, figure out their own strategies to beat the difficult parts of the game. And you do that by giving them challenges in little bits that they can then overcome, and then they have a, a more and more deep skill, skill skill set to draw from when they want to attempt the next challenge. So when they have a much bigger challenge late in the game, it's a bunch of tasks that they can think back to of what they can possibly do. Whereas if you send them that first challenge at the very beginning of the game, that big challenge at the very beginning of the game, they're just going to see a brick wall and say, never mind. See, Moose, when you sit at home and you play My Little Pony all day, it's hard to know what a real challenge is and, and what a walk in the park is. So don't worry. We dumbed down the first part for you. <laughs> you certainly did not. Yes, we did. And if you still can't beat it, then you just bad at video games. <laughs> <laughs> Says the person who died 112 times on Legend of Zelda. And I can admit it's because I'm bad at the game, not because Zelda's a poor game. Owned. No, no. Zelda was, <laughs> be, Zelda was a great game design. And I was able to beat it without such, without doing it a million times. And I stuck it. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. That was my door. The, the, thing, the thing about uh, Zelda is you just got to carry I'm going to have to get away from this. I apologize. Oh, you're, you're fine. Moose, you run the show, bro. I, I'll, I'll let you I'll take for a second. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Hello, Zeeple's guitar and tree. <laughs> yeah, it's good to, good to meet you guys. Good to meet you. <laughs> Pretty talkative bunch of uh, instruments and vegetation. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what are you going to say, Thomas, about difficulty? About what? Difficulty. Um, I'm trying to think if I had anything to say on that. Oh, geez, that was fast. Yeah. Are they giving you your new yellow book for the year? <laughs> what? They're like going around giving all the new yellow books and white pages because oh, oh. it's at, always at the start of the new year when you get one. That was my blue Yeti microphone, bro. Oh, nice. Yeah, you should plug it in because your quality is not that great right now. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> well, this, Moose, your, you, your voice dropped three octaves. <laughs> I beg your pardon. It went up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> three octaves, that's a lot. Anyway, uh, sorry I had to leave. Oh, no problem. You were you were definitely missed. I I can't just talk to Moose anymore. It's it's incredibly difficult. <laughs> I talked to the guy for three hours. I don't even know why. This morning I, we were playing games. Got him on the Skype and 
talked about how awesome the world is. It's pretty sweet. That's not how that conversation went at all. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was three hours, though. Uh. So we have a few more careers that just popped into the chat. Uh, I want to give a call to uh, Eric in the Bakery, who is one of your competitors for uh, for yeah. the arcade category. And I hold the top score in his game almost by double. <laughs> It just means you just didn't uh, get bored before everybody else did, I guess. I mean, it's not, again, it just means I'm better at video games than you. I also oh, got sure. past the first section of One Time Hero in less than 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Moose, Sweet. come on, speak up, bro. I'm reading chat. What's wrong with you? I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, oh Speed Rust Plague's yeah, there, too. Yeah, he's yeah. Being a, he's uh, lurking, being a ninja. <laughs> um... I'm really excited though about like just all the entries coming in. Like I'm I'm curious to see how it how it all pans out, right? Um, oh, this reminds me because as we're talking about stuff panning out, we're gonna do a last appeal for community judges. So if anybody did not participate in the game jam but would like to be a judge, let us know. Um, send me a private message on the forums because um, we're still looking at for judges. Um, we we have a good number, but we could always use more. So. You can just count my vote multiple times. That'll be great. Just, just what? Just count my vote multiple times. Sometimes, so. Let's not. In yeah, fact, I think I'm going to discard whatever thing, anything you send me. Very wise. Oh, that's too bad. I had uh, Defco and Zephyl's level marked you know, number one overall by like 50 points. But it's too bad now. That sounds pretty terrible. <laughs> it sounds very unfair. <laughs> it sounds very unfair. Especially if it counts by 10. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, so just uh, you know, if you want to be a, a community judge, just let us know, and that'll be awesome. Um, one thing I do want to hope uh, to get done before I head out today, um, and won't be in the office for the you know next couple days, is uh, we're gonna put up on the forums a kind of list of all the pretty much taking inventory of all the arcade entries, all the epic you know epic entries, and kind of just. Who they are, who the creators are. I'll try to track down team members. That's a little bit tougher because some people didn't declare them in the description and have like decided to leave them for end of credits, which is obviously requires a playthrough to discover that. But I think I'm gonna put them up there, and then if there's anything that needs to be corrected, I'll let people jump on and let me know that there needs to be correction. But I think that'd be kind of nice going into the holidays for people to be able to say like, this is how many entries are per. Know that they are indeed in there. Um, of course, we're not able to, like, right now look at who's disqualified or if there's anything like that. Um, the only person I know who's disqualified is Zephyls, but that's a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> For what? You have a moose uh, in your level. because I don't like you very much. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? Oh, that's awesome. Dude. Yeah, I saw the moose and I was very confused. That's very confused. I know, because we don't even like you, so yeah. why would we do something in your honor? I don't know. No, the thing is, you, the character uses me in the level, which is even worse. Yeah, oh, Wait, so I'm, so confused. I'm so confused right now. There's a moose somewhere? So, oh, there are two moose. There are two moose in moose our Moose is the plural of moose. Thank you very meese. much. I call them moose. I don't care. Is there a troll for a Thomas? <laughs> a troll for Thomas? No. Yeah, no. No, we we were, yeah we were. you are definitely disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> we were there's thinking two, about there's that. There's two moose and there's no troll? What is wrong? Two meese and no troll. I'm sorry. One topic that did come up this morning was uh, making a game called Thomas Was a Troll. Yes. And it was I would appreciate it and feature it, so that should happen. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be the sequel to uh, One Tim Hero. <laughs> one Tim Hero. I can't believe that. You're so dumb, dude. You're the one who's dumb. You're the one who posted without the E. <laughs> I don't know how you had a it was It was up there for like five minutes, and you said that, and I fixed it. But you had a speech impediment that somehow made its way onto the forums. <laughs> no. How are you? The <laughs> You're so mean. Yeah, I'm magic. See, okay, so the winner, the obvious, the obvious winner is Neon Neon Spark in the, in their team who did uh, Evolution because they had a troll in their level. So oh. automatic winner. There you go. That was one so of the guys. Uh, that was so one of the so earlier entries, wasn't it? Evolution. See you later. I'm out. Peace. <laughs> Rude, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Evolution was up for a while. I remember uh, playing it a bit um, yeah. early, early. Yeah, yeah he. Um, it's, Don't you start like 
I think it was like a side scroller. You start with a wolf. There's like a black silhouette of a wolf. Mm -hmm. or something. I, I, yeah, I did play that. It was. It looked really good. It reminded me of like a kind of a more lit up version of like a limbo kind of style game with some more action. It was cool. I had a lot of appreciation for that. Yeah, I have not played it yet. I've like played almost none of them so far. Intentionally, yeah. Holding back yeah. until I can judge them all at their time to be judged. Except for you know. One Tim Hero, which we can judge to be awful right now. Yeah, I have not. I have not played that one either, actually. Well, we do want. We do want to say we. Uh, come here. Um, I do want to say we. Uh, we, we actually did uh, make it a little easier, um, but we did announce that we are going to increase the difficulty back to how it's supposed to be um, after the judges get a chance to try it. We want them to see the entire level, and we uh, we we want them to experience the whole thing. So. That makes sense. I can see how it it could be a detriment, right? If you if it's so difficult and somebody's you know struggling for like an hour, yeah. then they end up like, okay, well, I'm gonna judge it in here, but I didn't see the last three levels or whatever. Yeah, as much as I can't stand the guy, Moose told me that uh, if it's not seen, it doesn't exist. So I thought that was a good point, and we adjusted accordingly. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I mean, that's, that's all about game design. Is the only yeah. thing that matters is what you're the player ends up encountering. Yeah, Everything yeah. else is just smoke and mirrors, basically. I've been saying that for months. Yeah, that was if, good. I liked that. And it's a little bit like, we keep talking about Dark Souls. Um, in Dark Souls, the, one of the first things you do is face this giant enemy, and you're basically given the option to kill him, or you run through a side door. Most people choose to run through the side door instead of killing him. But, if the game had forced you to kill this, the big hero, the big enemy, instead of being able to go through the side door, I think most people would have quit at that point. Interesting. Makes sense, Ted. Well, you want to hold down your shield button and run past the enemies, be my guess, bro. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I did actually see somebody in chat, uh, I think it was Wirt, say that he made it through the levels by uh, just geronimo and through them. That. Yeah, yeah. And not even killing any enemies, just running, 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 running. In which game? One Tim Hero. Dude, sha. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I wasn't sure if we were still talking. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. Not Dark Souls. No. Dork Souls. Oh. Dork Souls. Or, or Derp Souls, if you want to have a game where it doesn't even matter. Like, if you want to have like a Super Mario version of Dark Souls, you can call it Derp Souls, and then just you know, run around one hitting everything. That'd be great. <laughs> so, question. So, is old school Mario like known to be pretty easy then? Because I always thought it was like supposed to be actually could be difficult in places um well it we were just saying like a side scroller because like it's not just you jump you bounce around i mean there's stuff to dodge but you're also shooting it and fighting and running around mm -hmm. so it's, it's mostly just a stab at moose i'm gonna be honest um but uh, <laughs> it, it's yeah it's, it's a little harder than that you know? well you guys have a, a challenge because my favorite side scroller of the year right now is ori in the blind forest so <laughs> i don't oh, know okay. if, i don't know if you played that one but I've that was not, pretty uh, amazing Moose, did you play Ori? Uh, yeah, Ori is one of my favorite games of all time. It's great. Yep. Well, it's Metroidvania, so that's like right in my real house. Mm -hmm. As opposed to One Tim Hero, which is basically a metal slug on Spark. My favorite mechanic in yeah, Ori know. was the where you have to like choose to spend your power if you want to create a checkpoint or not. And and is some you know when you're going through the game, you will for sure at some point get through the game and not like forget to leave a checkpoint for yourself and then like end up having to repeat like the last 30 minutes because uh um because you're dumb but it's like i love that like where it's a cost benefit because you can't just spam checkpoints but you can kind of create them when you need them um ori is definitely really good so anybody who's thinking about buying it and i think it's on sale uh i would i would recommend getting it although i've heard that there is a definitive edition coming out uh spring so be aware of that so i have no idea what if what that includes if there's new content or not but i think i saw that on twitter it was a but, confirmation of a definitive edition but on steam right now it's like 40 percent off so it's like only 12 dollars for ori which is amazing how was yeah, did yeah. you use pc to or like actual keyboard mouse to play or did you do controller i, I, I used controller on xbox yeah i have a controller hooked up to my pc so i just use that okay yeah i don't know what the pc controls are like but it it was really nice on controller yeah Definitely, uh... My, I, I have, okay, I have one fault of Ori, though. So be warned, there's certain, like, dungeon-ish areas, like, when you go in, and then when you, like, you basically, it's like, 
you know, you go and you get your ability and do all this, and then when you exit it, you, like, can't return. Um, and then there, so if you miss, like, certain upgrades in that area, you're, like, out of luck. You can't, like, go back and get 100% completion. So, and I wasn't using, like, a guide, so, like, I missed, like, a few upgrades in, like, the first dungeon I did, and I, like, couldn't go back. I'm running so into that, that was kind one. of like, uh, for my, the completionist in me. Yeah, I'm running into that in Final Fantasy VI, um, because I've never played that, I'm doing it blind. There's, like, stuff, even chests that, like, if you don't get them now, they're better later, so it's, like, the opposite. Like, you don't want to get things now, you want to wait till later in the game. And I'm like, oh, gosh, so I, I know that feeling. Because I'll, I'll see chess, and it's like, oh, get that chess. There's, like, this super crazy weapon in it. I'm like, dude, I got that, like, back at level one. So kind of a bummer. Uh, Meskai just mentioned that it's actually 50% off on Xbox. And if you buy from Xbox, the Xbox store, instead of from Steam, then uh, the Ori team will get an additional, like, 30% of the money. Because oh. Steam takes 30% from of all sales when you buy from the Steam store. Did he say that? Because all I see is he mentioned that if you buy that one and then you eventually upgrade to the definitive edition, you'll end up buying, you'll spend less than what the definitive edition no, is. No, he didn't talk about the, the more money going to the, the devs, but I did because I know what Steam does. Oh. But okay. he just mentioned the 50% <laughs> off, and that's where I went from. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't think he said that. <laughs> that's not that's what he, that's not what he said. That's not English. <laughs> yeah, no. you're, what do you... What are you trying? You're trying to put words in his mouth? Because <laughs> mm -hmm. Metascad needs a whole lot of people to talk for him, I'm sure. <laughs> so, going to, back to the topic of uh, not being able to do things if you've already uh, gone past that point. Well, similarly, you must have learned a lot of things from your first time through this game jam, because at least this is the first time you've competed in the game jam's evils. Yeah. So what have you learned that would like may help you if you wanted to do another game jam? How would you go about it differently? Um... Obviously, you would uh, ignore everything Moose says going into it. Uh, that's number one. That's like the most important thing. <laughs> uh, so don't forget that. You wouldn't uh, team up with Defco. And uh, listen to everything that Team no. Dakota tells you. <laughs> yeah, and listen, yeah, listen to everything. Yeah. Uh, okay, no, serious, serious answer though. Um, I would definitely, if it was a, if it was a, a, co a collaborative thing, I'd, I'd team up with Defco anytime. Um, uh, if I would say if I do another one, make sure you understand the rules like 100% going into it. Um, and this one maybe is like a public apology of some sort. I don't know what to call it, but stay away. Like, unless you're being like, just stay away from the forums. Cause like all, all, all I did when I spoke on the forums was like hurt people's feelings and I'm not that guy. So I apologize if I did hurt anybody's feelings. Like that's not me. So like, and you're Seriously, feeling, he does like, tired, like feel really bad about this. He kept saying, dude, if there's anybody that I hurt, just let him know. I'm sorry. I didn't. Dude, like, I want people to know, like, I didn't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. Like, I was just saying, like, dude, like, we all knew the rules getting into it. I'm upset about some of the things, too, that I didn't read clearly. The rules were pretty clear, and it's like, if your feelings are hurt, stay away from the forums. I mean, just Thomas and Moose are both great resources. So, like, if you have an issue, just message them directly. Like, don't go put stuff on the forums um, if it's if it's a complaint. Like, I, I just, I don't think it helps the community. And I'm speaking for me personally, because... I, I did. I, I, I hurt some people's feelings and I don't want to do that. So I would say stay away from the forums about stuff you don't like. Um, read all the rules right away. And uh, I don't know. If, if you're going to do a, a collaborative thing, I would say make sure it's somebody that you have built a relationship with prior to the collaborative, collaboration. I think that's probably some good advice. Yeah. What about the um, creation effort itself? The creation effort itself. Okay. Uh, again... If it's collaborative, I'll explain that a little differently. If it's collaborative, um, I, with Defco and I, like, we were going to work on a game that I had already started and he was going to do some art for. Then we jumped into his project, and I kind of, like, faded out. I kind of set an expectation from the beginning, like, hey, I'm married. I just got a new job. I don't know how much I can, can do. So he, you know, setting expectations was good, but it, it was hard to go into somebody else's world that already existed and, and code because – he codes differently than I code, and I code differently than he could. And it's nothing against me or him because we both had that same problem. No, it is like against sitting... him. <laughs> no, it's not because he's sitting in my world. He's like, I don't know what to do. And I was sitting in his world like, I don't know what to do. And I may be a quicker coder than he is, but he's he's like in my – like. so I'm in his world trying to mess with his code, and he's in my world trying to mess with my art. Like he can't fix what I've done with my art. He needed to start all the way from scratch because he's just way better at it than I am. Um, and I don't know that that's at the extreme that it is for the coding, but I would say I definitely have an organized way of coding um, that, that was hard to do in his world. Um, so I would say 
for both of both me and him, like if we do another project together, I imagine we'll start from scratch with an empty world and we'll say, you work on this, I work on that. We have separate tasks, so we're not stepping on each other's toes. Um, I should stay as far away as I can from the art, uh, but the nice thing is he knows a decent amount of code, so he, we can both work on that part. Though I do, uh, I have looked at some of his levels and there is a lot of like duplicated code in his, uh, his executions. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, like for him, it's like, he goes into this he goes into the games and he's uh, he's he's different than i think just about any of us in the way that like he really like everything has a purpose like why is that rock there why is that bump there why is this there why is that there so like his goal when he gets in the game is to make it the most unique vast beautiful like world that he can if he's got to do 20 lines of code um, but it's going to look the best and that's the best way he knows how to do it and it's not going to decrease the frames then i mean job done. I think where I come in handy is, oh, you have 20 lines of code? Let me throw all that into one brain for you and have all those 20 objects add that brain. So if you ever want to edit it, you do it in one brain. So I think it's just learning each other's strengths and weaknesses. Um, and, and I would say uh, for him, it's not even a weakness. Like he could, like, dude, I, like I said, I'm, I was so much a cheerleader the whole time. He could have done it all without me had he had more time. Um, but where I come in handy is I can help clean it up and polish it and maybe make the process of the coding go a little quicker. So uh, yeah, I, I know I talk him up a lot, like everywhere, and Moose tells me to quit being a Defco's girlfriend or whatever. But he's good at what he does, man. There's no denying that. So I don't think I've ever said that. I I said you should. Never mind. I'm not gonna say it on camera. <laughs> Dude, you're so dumb. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I kind of wanted to talk about a couple things. Um. That you've like kind of talked about. So first, like going into it, um. When you know when you guys you decide where you're gonna collaborate. So. You know, we did this game jam for the first time. We, you know, specifically said unpublished work um, from the past or, you know, or things that you did publish could be taken out and used. Um, and because of that, you know, I think there was that beginning of do we do we start with something that we've already, you know, kind of half built or do we want to start from a clean slate? And I definitely think, you know, jumping in on somebody's half built project is a lot harder um, than, you know, I think it's if you guys start collaborating from an empty world, and it's you know, like both on the same page and no one really all of a sudden goes and spends a week working on it when the other one wasn't involved and they come back and it's like, whoa, I wasn't you know following along. Um, but if it's kind of like where you guys are in close step, I think it can be done. Um, jumping in for sure, like any, I mean, going to, you know, if we go to the work, you know, in the feeds and just try to make remix really any level, it's usually confusing it's hard for to do. a while. Yeah, it is hard to do. It's not super, you know, immediate, you know, how they set it up. I mean, there could be, I mean, with the way that objects are the, you know, things that hold logic, it's not like you get like some nice printout, right? It's like they're scattered all over the place and you literally have to physically track down some things and um, it can be hard for sure. Yeah. Uh, and that's why uh, Bob Schmacky's one, his number one request was to have some kind of uh, search function inside of brain. So you could search yeah. for a certain variable somewhere in the, in the, all the objects will pop up that have used that object or, you know, that or, variable or tile or what have you. Be able to yeah. quick, quickly go to where those are, those brains. Just like, I'm searching for the strength identifier, all right? Well, type it in, and then all these brains have little highlights pop up, then you click on that one, and then it zooms straight down to that part of the brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I want to know your answer to that question too, Zeeples. <laughs> What's that? Hey, Zeefles, do you find Sparks adorable? What are, uh, like, the little, like, like the little flying little... sparks, yeah. Yeah, the sparks. Uh, of course, like, why not? Like, it's absolutely adorable. It reminds me of Moose's shiny head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Floating around. That is offensive, and I demand that he be banned from the forums forever. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good now. All right. Thanks for chilling, dude. I'm glad you like that. School. Maybe tomorrow. tomorrow. He's talking, of course, to Thomas. And Thomas. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, and, um, I was going to talk about. Uh, I just wanted to mention briefly too. So your your kind of appeal about like you know the dot com forums and about the rules yeah. and stuff. So obviously, like why I'm I'm with Team Dakota and we're kind of the rule setters. Um, and I actually like try to figure out the the rules as best as I possibly can. Will we ever get the rules to be 100% clear for everyone? No. 
all you have to do is watch a single football game, and that sport's been going on for 60 years, and they still don't know <laughs> if they're going to call something a catch. this way or that Good way. Answer. There's, like, Good answer. there's nothing definitive, right? And there's so, and what happens, right, is like people will always be pushing boundaries because that's exactly what you should be doing. Yeah. Um, and it makes sense to investigate what those are. Um, and it's my, you know, and it's kind of my job to be like, okay, this is kind of gray area, you know, which way does it fall? Um, and what's great is that I try to be around for any of those questions that pop up. So, you know, throughout the game jam process, if you guys run into things, like, just know we're, we're always available, we're here, right? Um, send me a PM, I get to those as fast as possible. So, you know, if you want to publish, like, you know, I, I do recommend, like, if you have a, if, if you have, um, you know, a question about the rules, post it publicly so, you know, I can make a response publicly and there's a whole dialogue there. That's why we keep up that, you know, the, the Game Jam announcement thread sticky the whole time is for, for that kind of stuff. So there's constantly clarifying, you know, what can go which way, you know, do I need permission? Do I not permission? Is this world eligible to be used? How do I need to tag my world? All those things, right? Um, and so just keep asking those questions. Um, I mean, in the, in, the, in the end, right, like, you know, I, I know sometimes the forums, you know, people kind of can get worked up and it's just, you know, it's what, but it's whatever, like it's, you know, it's a discussion, it's just, it's people, yeah, people are going to be people and like, and people end, are awful. Yeah. I mean, in the end, I just want to like everybody realize like we are all passionate about Project Spark and that's like what brings us all here and we all have that goal and, you know, like we're not, no question, right? Like for the people who are super active, it's not like this giant, huge community where if somebody left you know, and, you know, it's not like, oh, whatever, you know, 30,000 other people are going to, like, show up and replace that person. Like, everybody in this community really matters, and I, you know, and I appreciate every single one, you know, person. Except so I want, Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, even z in this case, even though he's totally disqualified. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but seriously, like, you know, like, all I want to see, like, as being a community manager, right, is, like, Everybody get along, everybody get their questions asked, and, you know, like, obviously that won't happen 100% of the time, but um, it's my, like, job to try to make sure that happens. But, so, you know, I wouldn't say, like, stay, you know, don't stay away the forum, don't fear the forums, you know, yeah, during yeah. game, you know, game jams or anything like that, but, you know, just, you know, it's kind of like follow the golden rule, golden rule, treat people how you want to be treated, and just, just realize, like, you, there's always a person behind, like, that username, and it's, like, obviously, like, a really abstract thing, and it's, like, hard to, like, realize that, but people have their own lives, they have stuff going on, you have, like, no idea what they're dealing with that day either, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, I have my, like, days, too, where I'm, like, coming in, I'm, like, I just polished my span hammer, let's go! Let's go. <laughs> Who wants it? You know, like. And you've gotten your uh, yellow highlighter replaced because it started to get a little bit of red ink on it, so it just started turning a little bit orange. I don't know about that, no. <laughs> but uh, but uh, regardless, um, you know, like we, you know, just so just know that, right? Like, but we're we're a community, so that's just my little spiel. Uh, I thought this one went pretty well, actually. Yeah, I mean, I've always, I, there's I, always I, been I, stuff every game jam, and I know this is like your first one, right, Zeefels? Yeah, yeah, there's it is. it is not like a new thing. We learn new things every game jam for sure, and I'm sure there'll be something in the next one. <laughs> yeah, I, I think like the weird thing for me is like we're going into this like we're all competitors, and there's some judges, and, and we're all talking on these forums, and then it's like. Bam! Thomas shows up. It's like, dude, this is your job. Like, if you if you act up, if you misbehave in any way, like, you can't. Like, you have to. So, like, I feel bad for you sometimes because it's like, if I'm pissed off, I can just rant on the forums. Like, I hate you all. I'm deleting my account. But it's like, Thomas is over here. Like, this is my job. I have to be nice to these people right now. So, if I've ever caused you any of that pain, Thomas, I am sorry. Moose, no, not at all. Moose doesn't fine. care. No, I do. like, <laughs> so, I mean, is there moments where I'm like, ah, oh, man, you know, like. I mean, sure, but like, there's not. I'm actually pretty. I think I'm actually pretty even keeled about that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, you can go back and look at like my Zetarg when I was Zetarg, uh, you know, which is my personal account. I was publishing, you know, posting on the forums for like a year. And before. that's why we thought you were 12 years old. And then when we saw you at Pax Prime, we knew you were 12 years old. <laughs> yeah, if I was 12, I actually couldn't post on the this forums guy, Mike. because you're like have to be like at least 13 um, or if you're I guess you could have uh, an adult account when you're younger but somebody would have to like try to make that for you or you'd be lying who you are but Your older this, yeah technically if you're under 13 you can't post to our forums so technically 
<laughs> I know, I, I have an exception just for me. <laughs> but as Miss Gad said, you have your own sub forum where you call everyone jerks. <laughs> just to let out the fumes. Just. There's there's a lot just so to let you guys know there are a bunch of hidden sub forums which like are you they've been used in the past that have been taken off. Like right, there's like a there's a whole sub forum that was made for Alpha when Alpha was going on for people to talk on and that's like no longer visible and is like gone. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of those. So maybe there is a uh, Angry Thomas subform, but you'll never know. I'd love to see that. Thomasine Rage Troll. <laughs> Where he just goes on and he's like, oh, Damn it, why did Moose Stop. have to respond to that thread again? Stop <laughs> responding, Moose. It's anyway. like, yeah, there's like a thread that's like old that's like people just going at it. It's like 51 replies, and it's like at the very bottom. One person says something, it's at the top. So it just starts the chain back over again. <laughs> people start talking. Oh, uh, I can't believe you said that to me. That's when I said it. You I realize guess... this post was done like two years ago. <laughs> Sometimes it was. That's like yeah. I've seen some posts like get like uh, especially when um, when you have a lot of like newer people like on the forums. So like when we announced that we were free, there was like quite a bit of like you know newer brand new people to Spark who were like on the forums. I mean, we have new people every single day, but like that was like a huge rush of new people. Yeah. And like you see all these like posts that are like you know i think it's like necro like basically like brought back to life <laughs> like you know it's like from you're like what 2000 you know march 2014 and like the last comment is like somebody talking you know from like today <laughs> you're like what <laughs> well, has this bug been fixed yet yeah. oh yeah unfortunately sometimes they haven't been <laughs> actually it's yeah, probably yeah. more often like true sure. words and campaigns and <laughs> well uh Another version of necromancy. <laughs> another version of necromancy. Uh, some we have a whole bunch of levels that we just came out that we can sort through for the next couple of weeks. But there's also a few that didn't quite make this deadline, or that we have to look forward to even after the game jam. Uh, uh, Vector oh, yeah, Shadow was... didn't make it mm -hmm. because he didn't think he was going to make it in the deadline. He, it was more important to him to get the completed version done than to finish something up over you know at a certain deadline that he didn't know about it in advance yep that makes sense yeah, yeah, yeah i think I what i mean that. in the end i think what happened is you know i think we talked about it quite a bit at the beginning about scope right and i think like you know of course people just have stuff come up and then they get busy and they can't finish what their planned scope was or maybe they just had a scope that was ended up being too large and they didn't want to make the sacrifices necessary to get in the time limit i mean that's that's true game development right where you're like have a deadline and it's like all right we got to cut these three you know upgrades and two dungeons and whatever because we're not going to make it in time um or you know under budget or what have you i mean there's a lot of constraints so it's 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 cool i mean it's so obviously i want as many people who want to be entered into the jam i want them to be entered but like it's it's very adequate that we see those constraints um happen because it's true it's it's true to game real game development it's true to what we do here in spark um you're sometimes not going to be able to finish what you start. Yep, scope is incredibly important because um, in this case, we had two, two, uh, two months to do the game jam instead of one, which was the prior game jams. And I'm not sure if everybody that um, entered had the appropriate scope in mind, whether it be because they had not enough team members or their or team, team members. members who didn't help or what have you, right? Right. So... I guess the best way to go about it in the future would be to count on it only being one or two people who actually do most of the work, and then everybody else you expect to only get from them what you what they actually provide. Don't expect any more than that. Yeah, um, yeah it's better to undercommit and overdeliver than to overcommit and underdeliver. Indeed. Yep. I would say I think one thing I would do is uh, next, if you know, if, you know. If we do a next game jam and all that, you know, I have to do my little disclaimer because, <laughs> like, I have, you know, I have no idea, right? But, so, um, you know, should we do another game jam? I don't think I would. I would think I would limit collaborations to four people because I think that's the maximum number that you'd be able to get where people could contribute equally. I think if you go any more than that, you're going to have people who kind of ride the, you know, kind of coattails of others and contribute very little. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'm sure, I guarantee there's exceptions, but... I feel like, I don't know, I, I feel like narrowing it down to four instead of I think we had eight this time. Right. You know, I gotta, I gotta say, um, I have a lot of respect for 
I'm going to talk about me and Defco again for a second, but I have a lot of respect for him. I'm, because I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Moose, what are you, your, your sarcasm is contagious. Um, so I have a lot of respect for him because it was really hard for us to get started. And once we did, I, I kind of, I did set the expectation, Hey, I'm not going to be around maybe as much as you are, but I kind of just phased out and like, you know, he didn't, he, he handled it really well. You know, it, it was, he had, he had low expectations for what I was going to do. I had low expectations for what I was going to be able to do. And then here in the last week, I was able to just, you know, cut and grind and get things done with him and, and for him. Um, but at the end of it, I'm like, so how do you want to do this? Like, I'll, I respect however you want to do it. And he's like, we're just going to throw up there, like, you know, creation by Devco and Zfuls, And like, that's how it is. It's not a, well, how much percent did you do? Well, 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 how much did you do? What did I do? He's like, you know what? If people want to know, like there is, there aren't credits. If people want to know what, who did what they can ask and we'll just be honest. But like, he was, he was pretty chill about that. Um, uh, maybe more chill about it than I would be if I was in his shoes. So props to him for not wanting to make it about a scale. And it's kind of like marriage, you know, you don't scale who's doing what better. You just do what you got to do and get it done. That, that's oh. my thought. I'm the single guy here. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> hey, anyway. I don't know what you're talking about. My marriage. I'm like, I did three dishes and cooked Dude. dinner this day. You need to do at least three dishes today. And <laughs> Dude, if we did a scale on who does what more, my wife would destroy me, bro. She's oh, amazing. You <laughs> get, I, I would not do it a scale or else I yeah. would look terrible. <laughs> and, uh, dude, same here. This is also why Thomas was sleeping on the couch every night that I was at his house. No, I wasn't. <laughs> you stayed at Thomas' house? Yeah, for the for PAX. Oh, nice. Jelly Yeah, jelly. he came over for yeah, PAX Prime. <laughs> so Z married. You, you can come uh, you can come no, next no. year, Z Fools, and we'll we'll leave uh, Moose in Baltimore. Yeah, there we go. That's a good idea. That's fine. I'll will st stay with Reeb. <laughs> ticket, I'll be there. I'm only like, I'm south of you, not too far. I don't know how far that is, but I'm in. Oh yeah, you'd be able to drive up. Yeah, Salem area. I love it. Yeah, that's probably I'd say what four hours. Yeah, it's not bad. All right. So, advice for other people, uh, Zephyls. What would you suggest uh, going into the next game jam? Like, how would you, if you were to tell people how to start a team and then how to attack the creation process, what steps would you suggest? Um. Very, very clear expectations. I am working on this. You are working on that. I can commit this much time. You can commit that much time. And grace. I think grace is huge. I know not everybody. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't I, even know what grace having, is. Grace. Yeah, exactly. Being willing to just be like, oh, you committed this much time, but you couldn't make it happen this week. Uh, there's grace on that. Like there may be a time where you're shortcoming too. Like this is not our jobs. This is a hobby. So have fun doing it. Um, and, uh, you know, for some of us, it, it's, it's a hobby that we hope to turn into a career someday. So also give it the respect that it deserves that some people do want to make a career of it. You know, respect, grace. Um, I think it's, it's See, no every time you say grace, I just think of food, food. Yeah, no, <laughs> like be willing to not, not hang things over people's heads if, if they can't commit to it. You know, if it continually happens, I guess just, again, expectations like, hey, are you in or you're out? Like, oh, I'm out. Okay, see ya. Like, let's just keep moving on. So uh, as far as the coding piece, get into the get into the world and just write down on paper even like, hey, I'm doing this, you're doing that. If you say you're doing the, if you say you're working on, you know, the, the coding and then next time I come in here, you changed all the coding, it's like, wait, why'd you do that? We said that I was doing the coding. And like, just solid, solid communication, so. How would you suggest uh, do the communication, like over email or? Uh, whatever method you can. I have Defco's phone number. Um, I have him on Xbox, uh, and I, I could reach out to him on PC if I really needed to. But um, whatever works best for you guys. I would say the more the more methods of communication you're willing to use, the better. Pager. Pager's good. Mm -hmm. Pager's good, yeah. Uh, <laughs> car carrier pigeon. Yeah. Uh, Walkie-talkie. Send a raven. Uh, Send a raven, yeah. Yeah. All right, um, JR. So uh, I guess the other thing is uh, Star Wars came out, and the yeah. th we, so this is the point where we have to spoil it for everybody, where R2-D2 kills no. Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> I almost took off my headset. No. Let's not, because I'm, uh, I'm seeing it on Christmas Day, and I have successfully avoided, for somebody who's like on social media all day, I've successfully have avoided any problems, and now I'm closing Twitch chat, so don't even yeah, try yeah. it. <laughs> Luke uh, travels back in time to get his parents back together. Hey, um, 
I don't know if you got my message or not, Moose. But no, I can't open it right now, otherwise everybody in the uh, chat have, will see it. I was able to do a one-hour commitment, um, and me and my wife are going to start celebrating some Christmas stuff. So I appreciate you guys, and you guys are awesome, but I need to get going. Okay, okay. well, last cool. thing we're going to do is just show off the concept art, and then we're going to get out. Oh, you guys! Oh, I feel bad. I don't need to kick you guys out. No, it's it's fine. We no, wait. You. This is like this is quick. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So we have an elf, an elf tower, and uh, a forest spirit, and forest spirit poo. <laughs> what? I didn't, even, I didn't even notice the that until you like said mentioned that. Well, it has I writing think. next to it. It's not like it's. Uh, I know. Hidden. I love it. Oh. It's awesome. Uh, yeah. So now I can actually see oh, it. Man, that's so seconds. Cool. Yeah. So this was uh just. Keep, keep with our theme of sharing different concept art every spark cast and we've been on a very much of an elf theme uh, so this is looking at a little bit of architecture um, there's a forest spirit and there's even forest spirit poo which is just hilarious um, but yeah so I thought this was cool you can even see here that there what does that say about the Codian sh shelling I don't know organic growth so it's talking about like the I mean, it's funny because I think the the vines or whatever over, um, you know, over her legs and stuff. I think that's seen on Avalon when she level or when she's like her higher level, she gets those like wrapped that's around her leg. Cool. I'm pretty sure. Um, that's why is my camera cool. huge right now? I'm watching myself on it. It looked like I got giant. <laughs> I'm exactly. Nope, just you're like so that. small. Don't worry. Yep. Um, so it's interesting to see like what you know what got carried over and whatnot, and obviously right the. Um, for those who haven't been on other previous spark casts, uh, you know we've talked about how kind of our elves kind of slowly ended up being more and more uh, like our Codians, um, and that's kind of where it they kind of stopped, and we stopped really thinking elves and went more in the Codian route for our sci-fi series. But uh, but yeah, and then the forest spirit is really interesting. I kind of think the uh, elemental stuff, you know, floating above them and whatnot, you know pretty kind of a nice touch over the open log but and then there's poo because poo and there's poo because far as poo everybody far as poo. poos even far as spirits <laughs> i i learned that from a book <laughs> which you read yesterday <laughs> i did it helped me get to you know was, that's how you get from age 11 to 12 as you read that book <laughs> and real quick uh any streams remaining this week or are you done this is the last one um I will uh, will not be streaming, um, or I won't even be in the office uh, tomorrow for Christmas Eve or Christmas. Um, I will be back next week. So the next, really the next, um, next stream you can look forward to is the next Sparkcast actually on Wednesday. And we have a special guest who remained hidden. He's a f former Team Dakota member. Oh, sweet. Yeah. And he's going to reveal all the secrets now that he's no longer threatened by uh, being fired. <laughs> All right, so thanks again for everybody for joining us. Um, we hope you enjoy One Tim Hero and <laughs> all the other developer game jam entries. One Time Hero. Bro. One Time Hero? Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> so everyone's in chat is worry worrying about the poo if it has animations and stuff like that. Anyway, so on that note, we are going to sign off, and we'll see you guys next week. Uh, thank you, Zephyrs, for joining us, and thank you, uh, Thomas, and... Zeevils, thank your wife for putting up with being five minutes late. <laughs> All right. Of course, of course. Night, guys. Yeah, happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. See ya. Okay, so Thomas, okay. tell us about the next thing that's coming out, the next uh, content. Zeevils needs to go, so if you're still alive, you need to <laughs> I make... do gotta go.